What's up guys, Mike Lewis here and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe. And without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. Okay, Mr. Ryan Leslie, thank you for taking the time today and coming on the show. How are you doing? Hey, man, doing well. Thanks for having me. It's been a while for you, right? You've been out of the uh, game for quite some time. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's an understatement. Yeah, it's crazy. I actually never really think about it, but you know, every so often I do, and I'm like, man, that was so long ago. But so, absolutely, 100. percent How uh, have you been holding up during this whole process with all the craziness in the last year or so? With COVID and everything. Yeah, it's been a it's been a stressful year, you know. Um, I think it affects everybody differently, and uh, you know, for my situation as well as my girlfriend Ashley, we're both autoimmune compromised, so it's been super scary uh, just with the the risk involved. And we have uh, a seven year old girl and a five month old boy, so him being so young, that's super scary too. So we have literally, man, like just been in like a dungeon a cave for the past, since actually last, so over a year, last March, the middle of March is when I stopped working and I still haven't been back, so. Wow. Yeah. So are you still up to the, um, cause I think it was before your real world, you were working at the uh, hair uh, salon. Is that still what you do? Yeah, I'm still at my dad's salon. Uh, it's called Ish Salon in Ahwatukee in Arizona. And we've, uh, let me see, I think he, he opened it when I was like 17 or something. I, I've, I've been employed there for like 13 years or something stupid so yeah same same place did that get uh shut down too when uh all this transpired yeah yeah uh in the very beginning uh i believe it was like maybe april or something but it was only shut down for like a month or so so it's back up and it's been up for yeah a long time a year now so nice 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 so what were you up to uh prior to real world like i know obviously you mentioned about the salon was there uh, were you going to school what were you doing yeah, so I went to cosmetology school at Tony and Guy uh, back in, I don't even know what year I did it, 2010, so 09, I think I started 08, 09-ish, around there, and uh, graduated from there, and I was just, yeah, just going to school. I mean, hair school's crazy, man. It, I, I don't remember the exact amount of hours, a um, couple thousand hours, and basically it was 11 months um, from 8 to like 3, so it was like 40 hours a week um, you know, five days a week. And, uh, so it was like a full-time job, you know, so I was doing that. And then after school, I'd get off at like three, three thirty, and I'd get to work by four and then I'd get off there by like seven thirty. So I was having, you know, long days, but just trying to get my license and stuff. And then when I finally ended up getting that, that's when I started working full-time at, at the salon. Wow. So then it seemed like you were kind of like actually living, like, you know, the, the pun intended is kind of like you get into the real world when you go on real world, but it seemed like you were kind of like more accustomed than it, than most. Yeah, yeah. I was already living that real world life, man. No, that, that, that's a good point. I've actually never thought about that before, but most definitely, you know, I was super young. So how old are you, by the way? Uh, 21. 20. Oh, just a, a wee baby. That's like, how old the dude, that's actually literally, I was 21 when I got casted. So it's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> to think of, literally. Yeah, because I mean, t- honestly, in most cases, like the people that are, you know, getting on these shows, like typically run through the ages of, like 18, 19, 20, 21, like maybe yeah. a little older than that. So like they're usually, you know, taking semesters off of like school if they're going or, you know, have like a little bit of uh, more complex situations. But yeah, you, you just said it best. I mean, you were working, you were living the dream. <laughs> yeah, man, I was, I was. You know, it, it, it was cool. It was exciting. It's crazy because I, I didn't really put it together how close that was from me finishing school to working in the salon. And then it just got completely disrupted, you know, so and it went off and then that changed everything. So uh, how often do you, uh, you know, reminisce back or to think back? Is it often or you kind of just like intentionally want to leave that behind you? Yeah. So, you know, I reminisce back every single day of my life not about real world but just i have I, I i don't know i constantly think of just going back so you know your your question wasn't super clear so i'll answer it in both ways so if it just in general 
I always think back. I love, I miss like being a kid and just like with my family and my brother and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to real world stuff, is that what I'm probably assuming what yeah. you're, you're meaning? Um, you know, honestly, almost never. <laughs> I, I, it's not, it's not anything that, that I, uh, it's not like it was this magical time in my life or anything like that. And I miss being uh, younger and, and healthy. I, I, I miss that a lot. But other than that, not, there's not too much. So it was such a small point in, in my life that, uh, you know, it's just so minuscule. There's so many bigger things, more important things, real things, as cheesy as that is. But, you know, it's, yeah, so, so not that often. What, what was your process like getting onto the show? Like, could you walk me through, like, the uh, long version of it? Per, you, yeah. Like, the casting story. But, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. So I went to school, hair school, like I was telling you, with a girl named Jeanne. And she was on, um, I think it was Cancun or something. Cancun. Yeah. So she was a good friend of mine, you know, at that point. I haven't spoke to her in years now that I think about it. But um, so she went on, and she was, uh, you know, it's funny because you were saying, you know, it's 18, 19, 20, 21. She was not even 21 yet, but it was in Cancun. So I think she was only like 19 or something like that. So I remember me and my brother maybe my cousin, but it was definitely me and my brother. We went to the movies in Aotuki. We got out, and I, and I, I had heard that she was going to be on The Real World or something like that, which was, like, a really big deal because we grew up on that. So, you know, it, it was like a I – don't, I don't even know if it's a show anymore. I don't think so. But basically, it was a huge deal. So I remember getting out and being like, hey, what's up? You know, we gave each other a hug, and then I was like, I thought you were going to do that. And she was – oh, she said, she said, no, I, I already did it. I um, – uh, I just got back like a couple weeks ago. This is this cool, cool. Me and my brother were walking back and I, and I, and I was like, dude, think about how much her life's about to change. Like what a rad feeling that must be. Right. And I go, if she could do it, I could do it. Cause she fucking sucks. Like that, that that's, you know, it's, it's a stupid way to think, but that is word for word. What I said, I said, she sucks. If she could get on that show, I can get on that show for sure. And, uh, which was my, you know, 21 year old thinking or whatever but uh and so so basically after I found that out then you know my brother and I were talking he's awesome and he and he went home and he texted me he's like dude the next audition is in two months at Tempe Marketplace at a place called um I forget the name of the place some stupid bar right um basically so uh he hit me up and he's like yeah let's go do it so me my brother and my cousin who were all like super super tight and we're still super close but you know when you're young you don't have families or real jobs technically and you're just you know hanging out every day so we all went my brother picked me up me my brother my cousin we all went to audition for it and um i okay so we all went oh yeah so so we did our, our thing my brother didn't get like, so basically what they did was that, so they put you in on, on a table with people to see how you interact, right? And it's like, everybody's trying to be like all over the top and, and stuff like that. And uh, so basically what had happened was at the end, they start reading off names and, you know, my name wasn't getting called and, and I'm thinking, oh shit, you know? And then I was, it was me and one other person that, oh, this cocky girl, she sucks so bad. I, I, I haven't thought about her in so long, but um she was just very annoying. Anyhow, we, we basically were the only two there. And what it is, is they call your name if you, if they're not going to, you know, so, so with the people that were left there, then they say, okay, we'd like to have you come back to do another interview, filmed interview this time. And so basically we got a call back and go to um, a hotel. And this was maybe like a couple days later or so go to a hotel. They do a one hour to two hour interview. Oh, and my cousin made it too. So so me and my cousin both get a call back. We both go do our interviews. His was like 30 minutes. Mine was like two hours. And from there, they're like, okay, you'll hear from us if you hear from us pretty much, right? I'm like, all right, sweet. It's waiting, waiting, you know, and I'm just like, at this point, since I've, I've gotten a little a little taste of it, you know, kind of how we were talking before you started, uh, you know, it's like addicting, but uh, I got a little taste for it. And I was just like, dang, man, like I want to get called back and this, this, this. So then eventually I ended up getting called back. My cousin didn't, unfortunately, but um, went back, did another interview. So from that one, they're like, okay, yeah, you know, you just have to wait. If you hear from us, you will. Um, I think they actually weren't even going to let you know if you didn't get caught. Like it was literally you either heard from them or you didn't, right? So basically it was like a month and, you know, I'm kind of jumbling because I haven't legitimately thought about this in, in 
probably 10 years. So this is as clear as I, so sorry if I'm stumbling, but uh, so uh, basically, so I got that call back uh, or yeah, I was waiting for it, waiting for it. Finally got the call back, super stoked. Tell yes, this is this. Another one, okay? So they're like, okay, this one is in three weeks. We're gonna come out. This one's gonna be this long, this is this, whatever. Go there, do that. And you know, at this point, you know, the mindset I had was uh, just your, just a, God, dude, was I just a fucking idiot? I mean, let me tell you, I just, I just think back to like my mindset on, on anyhow, basically my mindset was I am so, <laughs> I am so awesome. I am literally so cool that they are lucky if they had me <laughs> on their show, right? And that's what I, that's what I believed at the, at the point, which <laughs> hell, why not? So I was thinking, fuck it, man. They're lucky if they get me on there. So and and that's so why I waited, but you know, deep down, I mean, I, I still wanted to be on it super badly, you know. So so I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I get the fine, and I get the call back, and I'm like, yes, yes, oh my gosh. So they're like, all right, now this is you're in the semifinals, and um, where was the semifinals? Oh, you know what? That whole that last interview I just told you about that was the semifinals. Then I got the call back for the finals, which they flew you out to LA. Flew me out to LA, which was pretty cool. I went to like. Bunim and Murray or whatever the creators of the show are. They have like an office down there and I don't know, I think it was LA or somewhere. And you did the final interview. And at that point I was like so hooked, man. I was just thinking, gosh, I got to be on this. So I went down there, killed the interview. I felt like it was, you know, I say I killed the interview because there's not really anything else in my life prior or after that I've, I've felt that level of confidence and that, you know when you do something and it feels right? Yeah. Like it just felt like it just felt like solid, man. Like everything was going great and it just it was it was just a, a you know, I swear to you, Michael, like literally every like interview or it was everything just lined up perfectly. I don't believe if I auditioned for the last season I would have made it or maybe the season after. It was just a perfect time. You know what I mean for everything. Mm -hmm. And um you know, so I went out and did the finals and then I waited for like a month and I remember I was driving, where was I? I was, oh, I was driving in Chandler Mall parking lot. That's a mall out here in Arizona. And I got a call and she goes, Hey, and I thought this was like the call and they were said they were going to let me know if I didn't make it or if I did. So I was like, Hey, and she's like, do you have any nicknames? And I was like, no, not really. No, why? And it was the weirdest conversation, which I had no idea until I'll tell you why they did that. But um, so I was like, no, you know, this is it. So anyways, I go home three, four days later, I get another call and I'm talking to this lady and I'm just telling her some, I don't know, stupid ass story. And uh, literally then she tells me that she said, hey, we just want to let you know, you know, you, you made it. You're, you know, welcome to the whatever real world family or whatever. That feeling I truly believe that that is the exact feeling I would assume it would feel like to win like a Powerball like I've never been like so stoked as that I was so excited I remember even thinking about that and I was like if somebody offered me a million dollars right now or to do this which one would I take and I would have taken the real you know I mean I just wanted that experience more so than anything and uh so I just remember freaking out jumping up and down in my apartment just losing my mind just being so stoked and back to when she called me um, and asked me for my nickname, it's because Ryan Knight was on there. So I had no idea and it, it made so much sense. And I don't even think I really put it together because I didn't like think about it until after. And then I was like, that's why they asked me, like, what relevance did that have? You know? So, so yeah, that's, that's the story in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> it wow. was pretty crazy, man. That is pretty gnarly. So would you say you'd say it was more so about the experience, like you really had no aspirations for getting onto TV, or yeah. I always just, I you know, like I always just wanted to be, you know, I was just young and I just wanted to be like recognized and you know, not like I always wanted to be famous. I never was, but I'm saying like, like real fame. Like I always thought that'd be cool. And after experiencing that. So I'm not even going to call it fame because it's not, but that little tiny level of whatever that is, I don't want that. It was wow. crazy, man. Yeah. But yeah, it was definitely more for the experience and stuff. You definitely don't make money on it. So, yeah. 
So, uh, what what did you feel like went well with the interview? Like, did the Ryan that we saw on in New Orleans is that what kind of translated in that interview? Or this isn't to sound weird, but I don't know. I I never watched it ever. So I well, it's a lie, but not a lie. I watched one episode, but I never watched. I, I don't know. I think there was like ten. So I legitimately watched one episode. Um, the amount of stuff that I saw switched and flipped, and I got the worst edit. I remember me and Knight talking at the reunion even, and he said that too. And I don't, I, I don't even want to watch the rest of it. But from the what I, the small bit that I did, it was, <laughs> dude, it was so messed up, so not real, and the furthest thing from reality. So. No, it was like the opposite of how the interviews went and everything like that. It was just like, uh, yeah, it was a surreal experience to see. Just I was, I was kind of irritated with the, um, you know, prior to turning this on, we were talking about, you know, taking things and flipping them, making it, you know, you could take certain scenarios. Because here's a, here's a thing to think about. I was there for three months straight. They, I was filmed for 24 hours a day, seven days a week for three months Every single second, cameras in our bathrooms, cameras in the kitchen, in the halls, this, in the car, when we got out, at bars, at grocery stores, wherever it was, there were cameras. They show 10 hours out of that. How many hours are, are there in three months? A lot, right? I mean, it was insane. So it's like the little bits and pieces and then the flip around. I just remember the one episode I did watch, I drove and dropped all my roommates off at a bar and went home by myself and just chilled. And then it shows me drop them off. And then it shows like somebody say something looking over at me, looking over at them. Like I was like, I was not even there that night. I literally dropped them off and went home. And you put, you placed me in a bar and it got a reaction out of me from something that didn't even happen that happened like six weeks later. Like, what are you talking, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I'm not down with that kind of stuff. <laughs> no, no, that's definitely, you know, and I'm, you're not. It's definitely not the first person to uh, say something similar. Um, was was that the one instance, or was there anything else in particular? Do you feel like that was I really watched, like I said? I, I only watched the one the one um, episode, but the reason I know that it had continued to happen is I was told by like family or friends or whatever, and I was just like, "Geez!" And I didn't watch it out of a I didn't not watch it out of a fear of that. And I it was I can't explain it. It was strange because when you think about it, it seems pretty silly to not watch it but it was honestly like i was like i just lived it like i really didn't have an interest in in after i seen that episode i was thinking all right if this is how they're gonna roll like i don't really care i don't really want to see it i know exactly what happened so but uh, yeah and i feel like that's a thing too like even with me like even after i get done recording these like i almost like it's like it's almost weird watching yourself back after like living something you yeah. know what i'm saying like i yeah. feel like even if you don't do anything that you maybe uh regret you, that's just like a natural feeling i feel like for sure for <laughs> it was weird it, it, it was super weird man and the episode i watched wasn't even bad like nothing like it didn't like make me look bad or anything like that but i just i saw what was going down and i was like that is not what happened like like the reason that the, the, you know, the thing that was so desirable to me about it to begin with, and it, it sounds silly, but it was honestly the title of the show. It was called the real world. Like I legitimately thought they were going to show how I was, who I was and what actually happened, which I would have been fine with. And it just, it just, you know, and I get it, dude, I've never been involved with such a legitimate production, millions of dollars, the show Baron Davis's house. I think that was his name, like a pro, I don't know, basketball player or something living in a mansion freaking you know a 24 7 camera crew sound guys assistants like it was a legit legit just everything about it you know what i mean mm -hmm. except you know and i get it they need a show people like garbage tv people like drama so you know i i understand it i i don't blame them at all and i was young and i signed my rights over so they could do whatever the hell they wanted with that footage you know so that's how it was is that kind of like what uh soured um you know maybe your thoughts like left like a sour taste in your mouth towards uh, maybe your time on the show. Yeah, I think I think so. You know, I never I, I well here's the thing, and I told this from the beginning was I'm not like you know I was super into longboarding. I'm like you know from the west. You know, I'm in, from Arizona, right next to California. Like I man, if it was like just somewhere like beachy or like I was super into longboarding and just I just I I can't explain it, but 
New Orleans is the only, you know, the place that I could, I don't know what to, how I can call it. It, it, To me, it's like the dumpster or garbage can of the United States. It's like the grossest fucking, you know, sorry for cousin, but just nastiest place. The people that do this is so bad. I'm going to get like assassinated. The people there suck. It's dude, the, the streets, I couldn't longboard anywhere. You're walking. There are literally, you know, how there's like a, a sidewalk and there's, there's, you know, they're in sections of, let's say, four feet, feet okay. by four feet. It's a square. The dimensions are do to do There's lines in it. The cracks in between the sidewalks sometimes would be 12 inches. Um, there's potholes everywhere, just trash. It was just a, a shithole, dude. I, I hated that place, man. The people sucked. Like, fuck, man. That was not my place. <laughs> that was the worst place that they could have sent me, man. It was the worst. So, <laughs> I, I was never stoked on the place ever. Wow. Yeah, that was actually going to lead into one of my next points, actually. I was going to ask you what you thought about, like, in, both initially and then after living there. Um, you know, what was your thoughts on uh, going to New Orleans? Were, here's, were you initially here's what, I, here's what I truly believe. It's still a, a dumpster, but it would have been a much, much more enjoyable experience if I wasn't tied down to the real world. And, you know, I made the, the super, you know, it's a, like a, such a elementary joke, but it, it's so, I said, it, you know, this is more like the rural world rather than the real world because the amount of rules that came across with it, we had no freedom. You can't leave, you know, it's, it's just in a quick, you know, one minute of a day in the life of living on the show. It's like you go there, or let's say I, I wake up, I wake up, camera crew, literally fucking watching me sleep, dude. Just, right? Creepy as hell. So I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, you know, that's what you signed up for. Go brush my teeth. Go downstairs. Camera crew in your face. Uh, oh, sorry. Before I could even go downstairs to talk to anybody, I had to go down the stairs, but to off to the left to uh, production area, pick up the bat phone. So you pick up a phone. We have like a few throughout the house. It immediately rings to production. Okay. So I pick it up. Hey, I need to be mic'd up. Hang up. I go down there. Can't look at the people. You have to turn around, put your hands up. They put, they mic you up, strap you up, put the mic on you. Cool. Thanks. Go downstairs, talk to, or, you know, to the living room, talk to some roommates, whatever. Okay, I'm going to go jump in the shower, pick up the bat phone. Hey, I need to get demiked. Okay, cool. Take a shower, get out, pick up. Immediately when you get out, bat phone, hey, I need to get mic'd up. Okay, cool. Um, I want to go to Whole, Whole Foods was like my sanctuary. I would just longboard there because that's one place cameras couldn't go, and I always had permission to go. So I would just sit. I would sit in Whole Foods, dude, sometimes for like four hours. Just looking out the window, just like, dude, this sucks. <laughs> but um, so, you know, so I would, I would do that. Anywhere I wanted to go, I had to get permission. Um, if I wanted to go to a restaurant, they would have to call and see if they can get it approved. And if they couldn't, typically we couldn't go. Or if we wanted to go, I would only be able to go by myself because they didn't want me and another roommate going anywhere where they couldn't film because they didn't want, you know, whatever. Fine. So I was like, okay, I need to get out of the house. I, I want to go longboard. Hey, can I go, you know, longboard? I'm longboarding. They send this guy out there with me that literally is oh my gosh dude i felt so bad this guy's like you know out of shape dude just like a little heavier and whatever that's fine but he's carrying a freaking 40 pound camera trying to run next i wanted to just to haul ass and and and, <laughs> and just fumble right he's just like <laughs> you know and i'm just like so i'm like pushing super slow and like putting on this like show for them and i'm like okay so I go up like a couple blocks. This guy's about to pass out. I'm like, screw this. I turn back. I go back home. I immediately walk in. I pick it up and I talk to the producer. I go, hey, dude, okay, can I like actually go longboard now? And I think he saw like what happened. He's like, okay, fine. So then I was able to go and like, you know, not have to feel bad for this guy that's like chasing me down. And I'm like, you're not getting anything interesting, you know, but it was just, it, it, you couldn't go anywhere, dude. I couldn't get in anybody's car. Um, if you, if, if you ride in a car that doesn't have a production, you don't have approval for it, you get fined $50. Oh, our curfew, okay? Our curfew was 12, I think. Maybe, yeah, 12 or – what time do bars close? Is it 12 or 2? I don't know. I haven't drank in so long. I think it's 2 now. Okay, yeah. so 2. Sounds late, right? Oh, my gosh, that's so late. That applies to everywhere except New Orleans. Literally, shit didn't even get started until 2 o'clock. And we're like rushing home. Fuck, fuck. If you didn't get home on time, you get fined $50. And and I'm just like, this is bullshit. We have a curfew. 
you know, we're 21, we're on this like badass show, you want to have fun. It's like all the literally, dude, maybe not two, but st places didn't start get like awesome until like one, one, one thirty, and then we had to leave, you know? So yeah. by two o'clock, it was just getting like, you know, crazy or whatever, which sounds like a nightmare now, but then it was amazing. And, you know, so it was just, it was just packed with rules. Like you just couldn't do your own thing. It was, so, you know, I even spoke to my girlfriend Ashley about it. It's like, she's like, I'd love to go there with you. And I'm just like, oh, but then I think about it. And I'm like, you know, being there and actually being able to go do what you want, it'd probably be a pretty badass place. But we were there doing during Super um, Super Bowl and they won, the Saints won. So that was pretty cool, man. That was a pretty cool, I'll, I'll give them that. That was a cool experience. Everybody was awesome, hugging each other, just jumping up and down, which sounds like a fucking nightmare now because of COVID. But, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> then you're yeah, just fucking spitting in each other's faces. Yeah, it was crazy, man. But, but. It was, it was, it was uh, not my favorite place, but I think if, honestly, if I could have just actually lived and done what you would normally do as like a human being, it probably would have been a lot better of an experience. Yeah. And that's what like most people say. I think it was like pretty much from like either like 07 or 08 on, like they really started cracking down, getting like more strict with rules. Like I know back in the day, at least on the challenges, like they were allowed to like, you know, use, you know, access phone and all that stuff. And like now, like if you leave the house or go out of, you know, the house, like you get like fined, like all this crazy money. Like, and it's crazy because you call it the real world, right? But then like, I feel like actually in the real world, like these are some pretty like, unreasonable or unrealistic things like to have a bunch of like uh young teens early 20 year old uh people coming home at like 12 a.m like that's just like not really what's gonna actually happen outside of this house dude it was nut. i could not agree more i remember this one guy real quick we were, we were at this bar and there you know what a, an audi r8 is yeah like a really bad you know it's like i think it's considered a supercar you know an iron man and stuff like that I went in there and I was sitting down. And I sat next to this uh, this like nerdy guy, like in his early thirties, and like I was like, he kept like talking to me, and I was just like, oh, like you know, I wasn't being a dick, but I forgot why I was there. I think it was I was me night, and we were just like chilling. We just didn't want to talk to anybody. We, we had a crazy day, and 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 I was just he's just like, oh, this, is, and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, you know, whatever, and I was like, oh, you see that uh, Audi R8 out there? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's mine, and I was like, no way. He goes, you want to drive it? I was like, fuck yes, I do, and. And I knew I was going to get fined. So we're ripping around in his, in his um, R8. The roads suck, so that sucked. But I got two flash tickets and like by literally like two or three blocks apart. We go back. I roll up to the real world house and all the cameras come out. And I just hop out of this R8. And I was, I was so <laughs> – it was the I, – I, I remember I said, I said, man, that was the best 50 bucks ever spent. Like it was so worth it. So, you know, instances like that I didn't mind. But – it, it really sucked, man. They, they have a hold on you for sure. <laughs> and, that was, and that was also crazy, too, to hear you mention uh, John A. Because just to put things into perspective a little bit, because um, the timing is ironic. They actually just pitched this uh, new kind of show this year, right, um, called Challenge. It's like you obviously know what the challenge is, right? Yeah. They have it to challenge all-stars, and they, like, threw this thing together, like, last second and kind of put, like, people who haven't been on the shows for like a while bring them back in and kind of be their own separate entity they're still the, the actual challenge but it's separate from that and uh john a and uh jemmy from your season actually both were just on it so no way so so is it is it out it's on uh paramount plus yeah to to watch oh cool man good for good for them that's awesome dude so so it was like similar real world road rules like chat like they did that kind of like physical stuff and yeah, it's the same exact thing, except um, they were pretty much just pulling from uh, older real worlders and people who haven't been on the shows in a while. Like honestly, yeah. That's dope, dude. That's dope. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, I I remember they asked me one of the people from production about doing that. Maybe like I don't know, five plus years ago or something like that. I had no no interest in it, but um, I, you know, it's like you see these dudes on TV, man. And I'm like, you guys are fucking jacked meatheads that will just destroy me like who like i'm not i don't have any like i'm not thinking like oh yeah like, like dude you've seen like fuck man what's that dude abe or ace or one of the west or these guys are like men i know i'm supposed to be a man but i don't i don't when you see these dudes i'm like hell no man <laughs> they're like literally just jacked as fuck i'm like no nah, yeah that, 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 that's not my forte, man. These guys will fuck me up. So <laughs> I, 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 I had no intention of ever doing those. Yeah, no, there was uh, well, I mean, 
it's been said or rumored that uh, you and Preston were actually the on the cast for Rivals 1 and got cut. I don't know uh, if there's any uh, truth to that. No, what is Rivals 1? I never got, I never talked to anybody about that. It was a challenge season, but the theme was Rivals, where they pair people who uh, butted heads on like sh- a show oh, or whatever. Um, how long ago was this? Recent? 2011, so like this is a while. Nah, nah, I, I would have done it then. So you think you would have done one? Yeah, I would have done one then, then. Oh, then, then. Right. Yeah, 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 not now. Like then when we, before I got sick and, um, uh, yeah, I would have, I would have done one. I would have fucked him up. But now, I mean, I, I, I see these, I've seen, I haven't seen in years and years, but you know, what's funny is even when, when like I talk about like, these guys are men, this is this, I remember watching it as a little kid and thinking that same thing. And then to be on it, I was thinking, I don't feel like that. Like these guys just seemed like, like larger than life, like, like, you know, physically and just kind of like, I don't know. Like, and again, I haven't watched myself. Maybe I come off the same way, but they just seem like, so like, I don't know. It's just, did you watch it when you were yours? You're way too young though. So I don't, I don't know if you, you didn't grow up watching it. So for like probably a very long time, probably since like, I watched my season. Yeah. I, oh. I, yeah. Like when it came out or uh, you were too young? I was probably too young. I started, I actually started watching right after your season. So I think like the first challenge season after your guys' real world. When's the first time you watched my season? Probably just this year. This year? Yeah. So, 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 so what did you, you, you watch and you clearly you perceive people a certain way. Am I, am I how you, you perceived me on the show? Um, well, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. you know, like obviously like they're, editing like a show and putting things together like we don't know like if that's truly what's being shown so like um I don't people think like that though you know not all people do yeah <laughs> but but, uh, like, but was there anything that that like did did you I, I honestly if you literally hated me i don't care but did you like me no, did you I, hate th- me? I thought you were entertaining yeah okay yeah cool. but but definitely like uh the demeanors might be a little different I'll have to I'll have to watch it sometime and see because I have no idea I can't even imagine man but yeah yeah no that's interesting to to hear so w- were you asked to do the challenge like how come it didn't come to fruition no no so I was never besides this the, like five years ago but that was like already so many you know what I mean so like immediately after I was never um asked asked to do it at all which actually surprised me um I might have made it clear that I, I was kind of pissed off with some of some of the stuff they did and like you know because there was like other people i guess they communicate through mtv to get a hold of you and it's like there were other people asking for me like the soup um that you know that show with um i don't know he's like a blonde hair or like sandy blonde hair guy oh J- joel Mc- uh or is that the soup joel McHale? the cooking show no it's called it's like a it's like a let's see it's like Okay, here. I don't know if there's like copywriting stuff on this, but like this show, uh, it's not getting big, but all right. Oh, so you got asked to do that? Yeah, that one. But here's the thing, dude. So they they called and and was like, hey, they they had to call MTV and then MTV called me and was like, hey, do you want to do this? You have to pay for your own ticket to go out there and they don't pay you. And I was like, ask if, if they, if they will pay for my flight. Right. I didn't care about the money or whatever. It didn't matter. They go and ask and I would have, I was going to do it. I just wanted to see if I could at least ask, you know, negotiate a little like shit. We pay for my flight. If not, I'll, I'll make a trip out of there and go see with some of my buddies or something. So they literally called me back and was like, all right, I, they said they wouldn't pay for your flight. I told them no. And I was like, why did you tell them no? I didn't say that. Like, I, I, I just told you to ask them if they would pay for it. So basically, they just screwed that over, and I wasn't able to do that, which would have been a really fun show. Not for the money or anything like that, but I don't know. I thought that would be cool to be on. You go on there. He's funny as hell, man, and you get to, like, make fun of yourself, right? So, like, it would have, he would have been, like, making fun of me, and I would have, like, done it. Like, you know, I don't know. That kind of pissed me off. I was a little upset about that. Also, with the uh, leading up to the reunion and shit, I, I don't know. I just had some, like... They just kind of like fuck with you, so I can't explain it, man. It's just it's just weird. So maybe they didn't reach out because I uh, 
made it clear that I, I didn't want to do that or maybe I don't know maybe I just sucked and they didn't want me to do it either way I don't care so it's, it's whatever man but I'm gonna ask you now since you know we're obviously like over a decade removed like we can look back on this now um, with a different maybe perspective why do you feel like uh, you clashed with like some of your roommates like what do you feel like there was a disconnect for and I swear dude it's it, I, I, I mean this a hundred percent I didn't like like I, like I said the real world right I held that at a high standard and it really really pissed me off to see the fakeness in these fucking people dude it grossed me out like shit off cameras compared to the second cameras walk in it is two different people and it was very consistent and i hated that shit the freaking oh dude it was sickening it's like you know you're on a show you know you're being recorded we're sitting there having a conversation and are so cool. And the second that the camera, because they hear you at all times, so the second the cameras walk in, it's just a different person. And I can't stand that. I couldn't stand it at all. And and I just, I, I, I think honestly, that's that's what it was. It, it bothered me so much. I call people out on their shit. And um, I don't know. So clearly you're aware of it because you asked me that question. So it must show some stuff like that. And I'm just like, yeah, I just wasn't about it, man. I, I had, I don't like that. I don't like that kind of stuff. It really, really irritates me. And especially when, when it's like kind of like conniving, like manipulative stuff, ugh, it grosses me out, man. So I, I, I would say that's probably why. Who were, do you, would you say that there was any of uh, your roommates that say if like there wasn't a camera involved and like you just met them on the street, like would, were there any of them that you could see yourself potentially, you know, getting along with outside of that environment or? Yeah, so Bands. So not one single one would I have been friends with besides Knight. Wow. Who was fucking, oh, dude. I hate that stuff, man. I hate everything that happened with that. So shitty. He was such a cool fucking guy, man. I have nothing bad to say. You know, we had our, our own things, but I don't know what if, how it showed our relationship, if it showed us being best friends or enemies. But my best memories come from Knight. He was the coolest, funniest, you know, at that time, like, I didn't want to admit it probably, and I, I, I you know, thought I was so cool and shit. Dude, Knight was way cooler than me, way funnier, just a fucking awesome dude. I, I, yeah, I can't even, you know, wrap my mind around all that shit, but, but I would say Knight. We had some, we had some good times, and even after the show, I had um, hung out with him, and I think it was him and Sahar came out to film something i said i think i said because I, I i they needed to film like a follow-up thing but i told them i wasn't willing to fly anywhere so i think they just flew them out here and and flew the camera crew out here and stuff so we all hung out and stuff and man knight is just such a badass so i would say knight would be the only person i would, I would hang out with outside of that yeah, because it kind of seemed like uh, you and Preston, and well, more so Preston, out of the most uh, of the roommates, kind of got into it. Um, you you don't see that potentially you guys could have came to a common ground, say if there were uh, no cameras around. Uh, um, if there was no cameras, that was he was the fakest person that that by a long shot that was on on the show. But yeah, no, he's just like a you know it's so far down like later now, and it's like. I don't want to, oh, like, oh, I hate that guy, this is, but he's just, like, a real piece of shit. Just, like, a shitty person, you know? Straight yeah. up. But, you know, I, I give you a very small, like, you know, the with the um, audition and stuff like that, but you have to realize this is over months and waiting and just, you know, there's tens of thousands of people that audition, and it literally was the coolest, like, I mean, it's like a one in a million type deal, right? And the reason I'm saying this, it sounds random, but it's you. I had the impression in my head that I would get kicked off the show if I got into a fight. And God, if I can go back in time, they would not have kicked me off. And I could have fucked him up and no repercussions. And I wish I did. But other than that, no. Now, if I saw him, I, I don't I don't care. I don't have any problems. He's just a big piece of shit. But, you know, I'm not about to fight anybody. <laughs> Well, what was what was the deal with that toothbrush situation with him? Did you actually like get sick from that? Like what? I have I that's honestly like the sickest 
probably I've ever been in my entire life. That was super fucked up. Wow. That was super fucked up. Yeah. And, you know, I, I forget how it would even derive from. I think I was like messing. It wasn't even real. It was a joke that we were. God, what was it? I think it was something with the cigarettes. Yeah, like I, I, I like pretend to like put one on my ass or something like that, like something like immature, which I don't even know if I like, even if I did, it wasn't anything like that. I probably smoked it after. It was like a fucking joke. And I think I even, I even told, I think I told like Knight and Sahar maybe. Sahar maybe, yeah, maybe. I, I have no idea, but it was honestly that, that was like for show. It was such a fucking joke. I wish I did like really do something gross. You know what I mean? And, um, it, I think, see, I didn't, I didn't watch the show, but from being on it, I think Knight said something. Knight liked to, you know, I'm not going to say a negative thing about him. He, he's not here um, to, def, you know, defend himself or anything. So I have no interest in, you know, bad mouthing him because he's just an awesome dude all around regardless. But I think it might have been him that said something, which gives a fuck, you know, he liked to throw up the pot. It was just a. Yeah, he's such an instigator in like the best way. So I don't, I, I don't blame him for it. But and I don't even know if that was it. It honestly could have not been that. But it sucks because it got taken as something that really didn't happen. And it, I got you know, dude, I cannot believe how fucking sick that I got from that. I am the biggest germaphobe to begin with. Man, that is fucking disgusting, man. That was super fucked up because I wouldn't, I, I didn't go to that level. Like it, mine was a harmless prank, and honestly, it wasn't even what it seemed. So. Yeah, that was a, 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 a cruddy situation for sure. And and the cops came to the house after that too, right? Dude, fucking stupid. So um, I was talking to my dad, and I was like, I was certain I was going to get kicked off. I swear to God, dude. If, like I said, if I can go back in, in time, I literally just would have laid him out so fast. Like, oh, my God. But I talked to my dad, and let me get some water. One second, sorry. Yeah, no problem. <sighs> My dad's like, yeah, fuck that, you know, this is this, you should call the cops, that's like, I don't know what he called it, stupidest decision, so I, I listened, and I was like, yeah, good idea, and it was the stupidest thing ever, didn't do anything, like, what the fuck was the point of that, <laughs> like, <laughs> looking back at it, I actually even, I forgot that, that about that, oh my gosh, how stupid is that, yeah, so <laughs> that's what I did, I listened to my... <laughs> I don't know if it showed the conversation with my dad or not, but I swear to God, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the uh, M Mackenzie was another one too. Like, I, I like a lot of people were uh, laughing at uh, kind of like you guys uh, when you got into your little spat at the reunion. What was the deal with her? Because it seemed like a lot of people were like uh, thought she was like in her own different world. What was your dynamic with her? Yeah, dude, like she's super unique in the aspect that she like doesn't live on planet Earth, so like I've never met like an alien before. <laughs> I don't, dude, she's fucking literally, you know, she's, here, look at it this way. She could be the nicest, sweetest person ever. And th that's what sucks, is I didn't really get to see the true Mackenzie or Sahar or, what was the, uh, Aaron, er, Eric, Eric, yeah. Eric, or Preston or Knight. Like, it was this bullshit, like, fake version of them so honestly from what i remember she was just super ditzy and in cloud you know or not just like her, her head was in the clouds all the time and uh but she could be the sweetest nicest person i have no idea i have no idea but from what i remember you're asking about the reunion that's what i'm assuming you're talking about because i would just say that she was you know her head was in a different place all the time mm -hmm. i think i would say she was stupid but she could be super smart i have no idea <laughs> So if you could go back in time and, you know, do things a certain way, would you go back and do the experience all over again if you uh, could do it again? Yeah. If I, like, went back and, like, I can guarantee I'd still have my kids and everything, like, but, but you're just saying if I could redo that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I would, uh, I would uh, definitely, uh, absolutely, no questions about it. It would be so different, dude. You know, I would, I would literally, the stupid stuff that I let get to me or that, the arguments or whatever it was, dude, if I can go back and do it, I would just be 100% me. I would 
not argue with people. I wouldn't, I would just be nice. I'm like, I'm such a nice person always that it's so weird to think of like how much like the, like what it brings out in some people. And I just, yeah, I would just do it so differently. I would just have a good time, just be nice and happy and just treat people with respect and be friends with everybody. That That's the only thing different that I would do, you know? Yeah, no doubt. Um, did you go on any of those bar appearances that they have some of the cast members go on post show? Like where they pay yeah, you? I don't know. I don't know if they, Oh, was it through, I didn't do any through MTV, but I had like, I had once that people would contact me. Like I went to Vegas and stuff and they would pay you to show up and you get like free bottles and stuff like that. And yeah, so that was fun. How was that? It was, uh, that was crazy, man. Like, you know, you get like, I don't know, something like crazy, but I mean, it's, pretty ridiculous for what it is so they fly you out there they give you like you know a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a table unlimited bottles and like you just hang out with your friends like it, it, was, it was fun you know yeah it was a great experience but nothing to like you know you're just not like you're getting rich or anything like that and uh you're definitely not making money off of the the show so you but, know, they, but they advertise it right so that's cool too like they say like you know ryan from yeah that was cool man yeah, they had like a, I think it was like a cardboard cutout or something. That was, that was pretty rad. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was pretty fun. And Vegas was awesome, man. Like, you know, and I, oh, dude, and I got this bodyguard. Oh, my God. I got this bodyguard, this big ass black dude, just the coolest motherfucker, just jacked. And he just like literally stood by my side the entire night. It was amazing because people like to talk shit to me a lot. They think uh, either they saw me. Or they see that I'm getting a lot of attention. So, like, a lot of people just talk shit every time I go out. It didn't matter where. And, you know, but but an equal amount of praise um, and people being nice and cool. So, it was it, it weighed itself out. But, man, I had that dude, and this is at the Vegas one. And, um, oh, sorry, it's a cap. Um, and uh, this guy just started literally, like, I can't even tell you how many people tried to, like, fight me, man. Like, literally, I have no idea who I am. If they didn't watch the show, we probably would have been good friends and literally just like to hate somebody when you have nothing, you know, nothing about them, right? Other than what you, you saw through MTV or whatever, but it was just awesome. So we were like walking through the casino. I was going to go to the bathroom. This guy and his buddy, like we're getting like so hardcore. And then this big ass bodyguard comes up and just like literally just like removes them. It, it, it was awesome, man. So that, that was fun. That was a good time for sure. Is that kind of like maybe why you uh, don't have like a huge uh, presence on social media anymore? Is it potentially because of uh, some things that people could say to you online? Because I personally, like I'm not a social media fan per se. I mean, just in my current situation, like unfortunately, like it calls for me kind of having to use it. But like yeah. if it were up to me, like I would not be on social media. So I kind of want to ask you now, like maybe what's uh, what's your stance on it? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I it's like people are nonstop just like constantly do just facebook instagram snapchat uh what was the other one we were talking about uh, tiktok twitter TikTok. like yeah yeah and it's you know i i don't, I don't know what it is because i you know i have instagram and um i was doing the uh can't think buying thing for a while i had twitter that was cool when it you know but this is like when twitter was cool if it ever was and i had a verified account on there dude that literally got hacked somebody changed my password deleted all my tweets and now has it as their own like twitter so anyways i don't really care it only had like seventeen thousand followers or something which is like nothing for people these days that you know if if i if 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 the real world aired today i mean i'm i feel like you'd have like easy 100k like no problem you know like because social media is, is so twitter was like not that popular i feel like when when uh i mean it, it was it was starting to become popular but anyhow to answer your question i just don't have so so here's the thing all my followers right and i have throughout some plat however many platforms thousands and thousands of followers these are just people that i don't know i don't have anything to promote them they don't know me it has nothing to do with what they say to me or anything like that i don't care at all about i feel like i have fairly you know tough skin but um you know, it's just, I don't know. It, it's just not something that is that desirable to me. I feel like after the real world, I, I, 
is when the real real world you know happens and and it's it's not I, there's so many more things that are like so important and special and you know and I don't know I just it's just not something that I'm really like drawn drawn to anymore you know like I still have them like I still have an Instagram and I made it private and I have like literally thousands of requests that I haven't accepted um which I may do and you know I'll just post pictures of my family and stuff but like I don't know like nobody I don't think anybody to answer, you know, here's a good way to put it. People that get off the real world, they legitimately, like my roommates and stuff, thought that they were famous, okay? And I think the advantage I had over them in that aspect was I never once felt different or that I was famous or that I was anything special or anything like that which is a great mindset because I, I and I, I'm, I'm actually proud of myself for thinking this way then. I thought, this is so temporary and I'm not good with like big, like, like you know, you weeds up and then it just let down, like it's just gone. I don't handle like stuff like that that well. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself for, for being aware of this. And I thought, you can't let yourself think like that, first of all, because you're really not famous. You're nothing. I was on there for doing nothing. What was my talent? I, I'm breathing. I literally did nothing. Like I don't, do you know what I mean? Like, honestly, yeah. I'm not like a musician. I don't have a skill. Like I'm alive on this show. So what makes me special? I'm not famous. I, you know, I went to the red carpet and stuff. I, these people are like asking me, Ryan, Ryan, this is this. And I'm like, dude, there's like literally like Justin Bieber and dead mouse. Like, like, what are you talking about? Like, go talk to them. These are like real people. Hey, Selena Gomez right there. Go talk to her. Like, what are you going to ask me about? Like, Hey, what did you do? Like, you know, I, I, I don't know. So anyways, I feel like I, the fact that I didn't allow that to get to my head so that when the, it went away, it wasn't, there was never a letdown. It was like a smooth transition, which I feel like that could, you see these people holding on, grasping for some sort of popularity or fame that really is, is it, I don't know. I just don't think it's significant enough to, you know, and there's people like, um, Mike, the Miz who yeah. went on and did he's like a real celebrity now you know and good for him that's great what a badass but yeah so i don't have I, i'm not trying to to grasp onto any sort of fame or celebrity or anything like that because i don't think it existed to begin with you know that is probably like one of the more like raw responses to like a question like that and i actually gotta say like i admire that response like um you know a lot of people uh take themselves too seriously these days i try to pride myself on not um but, um, yeah, that was, like, a very well-put-together response, I thought. Thanks. So. I felt like it was super sloppy, but I hope you got the gist of it, my, what I was trying to say. Yeah, definitely. Um, kind of in closing here, though, I know, like, we kind of just, like, touched upon it, of course. Like, you know, kind of not really wanting to go back, you know, on this real-world uh, thing. But with all these, uh, you know, I just mentioned before about the challenge uh, thing with um, bringing back things. They also... Another thing, too, is they started doing a uh, real-world homecoming. They um, went and brought back all the uh, people from the original first season of The Real World, and they've said that, uh, you know, on this whole Paramount Plus thing that's currently, like, the new uh, wave of entertainment, they're going to continue to, um, you know, revisit real-world seasons. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, your season's uh, pretty popular, so I'm sure it's going to really? come up with quest. I got to say, if I'm pitching this idea, say if, um, you know, you were to hypothetically in the future get a call um, about a real world New Orleans 2, obviously your season, Homecoming, more so in the light to kind of like all get back together, but kind of pay tribute to Knight more, more or less in a way, since obviously he's gone. Would that be something you'd be open to? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, I would, how about this? I would be happy to go see everybody, make amends, let them see who I really am. I feel like I'm so much more mature now, um, whether, you know, in that's been, whether I'm like, you know, explain or how, how I'm presenting or whatever, you know, if that lines up, I don't know, but I feel like I'm a completely different person. I think that that's, that's an obvious thing, but, um, yeah, if it was not something to where it was just drama filled bullshit, if, I don't see here's the thing dude it's like I wouldn't want to leave my family for like three months so no but if it was something like shorter yeah sure. yeah if it was something shorter and it wasn't a competition to um 
you know, be at each other's throats or, or whatever. If I, if I could just go do something, I, I would be happy to work with MTV. I'd be happy to work with, with, you know, like, so wait, when you said the, the, the what was the new show called? Were they revisited? So they have like two different things now. It's called the challenge all stars, but they shorten and real world as well. It's real world homecoming. They do oh. both. Right. So they, it's like shortened seasons. I think like, uh, two, only like two weeks or something like that. And okay. that's, yeah. Okay, so it's like a, so it's probably well. Typically, it was one wait four eight twelve yeah because we were there for three. I think there was twelve episodes. So it was it was an episode a week for three months. So they're probably two weeks. Yeah, I would do something like that. I would do a two week thing. Yeah, because they they actually revisited the first ever. Uh, I think it was New York. So they yeah. just did uh, real yeah. world. New York. What's up? Is his name Puck? Is there was there a Puck on there? Um. I think that was the one with Eric Nice. Okay, because I know that he was known as being like a crazy ass guy. Like, I, and the name Puck Suck, is that his name? I think so. Like, he was yeah, like yeah. in one of the first episodes. Yeah, yeah. How about this? I would, to answer your question, yes, I would do something like that. No, I wouldn't go for three months. And I probably would not be doing one that involves a crazy strength contest with these like 40 year olds that are on steroids. So. <laughs> But but yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to do something like that just just for the experience and uh, yeah, I mean why not? Sure, why not? I I personally feel like um, you know it'd be cool to get you guys back together to more so in a way for uh, to pay tribute tonight. Yeah, you know? I think that'd be a cool and special moment. Yeah, the whole thing sucks, dude. I remember I because I was doing that I was doing Vine and stuff and I texted him and I said, hey dude, uh, do you want to like do a collab thing together and this is this and he's like yeah sure and then like a few hmm, maybe like a few weeks or a month later i think he was on he was going maybe he's just he was going he did one of those challenge things i think right so i think that's what it was and i think isn't that what it do you know about that because i i really don't know it sucks man like uh what happened because all i heard was that did he get hurt on um the challenge his shoulder yeah, he, he hurt his shoulder on the last season that he did with. And um, what did you hear about about him passing away? I heard that um I think it was like a, I think it was like um I I I don't want to get the details mixed up, but he he either got like um I don't know if he overdosed or he just got drunk and then maybe like um like. I don't know, choked on like his vomit or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, something along those lines. I think it was he was taking stuff he probably shouldn't have, and uh, I guess it was in his sleep. How fucked up is that, right? It was on Thanksgiving too. Was it really? Yep, 2014. Dude, think about how young. So let me see. We were. He was a little older than me. I think he was 23. So, dude, he was he was like what 26 or something. Yeah, because that was like at least four years after your guy's real world. So what a bummer, dude. He had like a, a solid girlfriend like, dude, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you, Michael. Listen, Knight is one of those guys that, man, I, I, I you can't. He was just a cool ass dude. The funniest, one of the funniest people I've ever met. The times that we had off camera. You know, gosh, if you have a second, I'll, I could tell you a story about when they came out here. Do you want me to tell you a story about night? So, so, so we went to go do this like follow up thing or whatever for MTV, and like I said, it was it was night and Sahar. I think came out, met my mom. We went out to a place called Mill Avenue, which was like college town in Arizona, right? There's like a bunch of bars and stuff like that. So night and Sahar go over off to this restaurant and uh, or this bar, and I was like, yo, I'm gonna go over here real quick. I forgot why. But I was sitting there at the bar and I was just drinking a beer. I don't, I don't drink anymore. I haven't drank in like, dude, I don't even know how long, like eight, eight years or something. But um, so I'm sitting there drinking a beer and this like big redheaded dude comes up and he's just like talking to me and just like making like stupid comments and like kind of just like trying to antagonize me a little bit, you know? So I, I was super chill, just like brush it off. Like, oh no, this is this. Happens again. No, no, no. I go walk, I'm up, I meet up with them, we're hanging out, he comes up, does it again, I'm like, no, dude, no. We're at the corner, and he's, he comes up again and starts talking shit, right? And, and now Knight's there. And 
at this point, I think I brushed him off like five, six times and he just, and then every time his, his comments kept, you know, getting like more like confrontational and rude and stuff like that. And I just had enough and I was like, no, like, you know, and we kind of got in like a, like a shouting match or whatever. And then I just like shoved him to just like, get the fuck away from me. And dude comes back with like a wild swing. Right. And I swear to you, I would, I just brought my head back and it just, oh, I felt the air from it, right? Right on my, on my freaking nose, man. And it was just one of those lucky, like, I just dodged it. Like, you could have just knocked me out right there, right? So anyways, so Knight just grabs him. He's like, yo, yo. And he's, fuck, dude, Knight's a badass. So he just grabbed him and was like, yo, like, chill out. Like, like this, this, this. The guy starts getting in Knight's face. And Knight was, was a hockey player. And Knight would fuck people up. Did it show him fighting on, on, on our season at all? He fought on the challenges. I know that. Did he? Okay. Okay. I'll, after this, I'll tell you like a, a, one more story that's like 30 seconds. But so, so literally he grabs him and just like moves him over and check this out. So, so the dude's sitting up against this, uh, this like gate or whatever. And you know how I told you like for every like person that was like rude or obnoxious, or whatever, there was like somebody that was cool and nice. So this big freaking tatted up, one of those dudes that wear their hats like, like this, you know, like, whoa, and he was just like, like a, a B, he probably, he probably weighed 220 pounds, solid muscle, just like he had like a tap out hat on or whatever. He goes, yo, never met this guy. He's like, yo, what's up, Ryan? Yo, who's fucking with you? I was like, oh no, dude, it's just, this guy over there was just trying to like fight me. It's whatever. The guy, he goes, oh, okay. He walks up to this fucking guy that was trying to fight me. This big ass jacked meathead turns around and just punches him as hard as he can check this out straight in the face the guy is sitting on the top of this gate that's only like up to your to your hip he goes back but his leg is wrapped around the bar so it's almost like how you could lean back and do a sit up and come up right so so this is a guy that i almost fought okay so check this out he takes the punch from that big giant me head that i, I would have probably just died right and yeah. uh, he does he sits back up hops up knight's trying to separate them again and the dude starts talking and shit, and Knight's like, yo, dude, I'm trying to help you, but I'll, like, basically, I'll fuck you up, right? So I'm pretty sure, yeah, so that guy comes at night. Knight just, like, sticks him, like, super hard. And this, dude, check this out. This redheaded dude, this is why you don't fuck with people, okay? This redheaded dude literally goes, what did he say? Oh, my gosh, Michael. He said, um, oh, <laughs> Like, okay, he's like, he's like, all right. He, he was like three or four of his boys. He goes, all right, take position. Take like, like something like, 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 like get in your positions. They all go back to back in a fucking like death circle. They have, this is clearly not the first time that they've done this, right? This giant brawl starts and this, <laughs> this, red, this guy could have killed me. Who takes a punch from a 220 pound guy and then take four, that's what it was, take formation, take formation. They all get in there and just start fucking people up, people up or whatever. And then me and I, I was like, dude, let's get out of here, man. So my buddy like was just pulling up in his car. We hopped in and took off. But Knight like totally had my back and like beat, like basically punched this guy in the face. That clearly is like a UFC fighter or some crazy person that gets in street fights. Cause I swear to God, when I heard him yell, take formation and they all went to like, uh, uh, you can tell that this is something they practice, right? So it was scary, but, but Knight always, he, he was just a badass. And, and you know, there was, I think there, I think there was a time I almost fought with Knight and he would have just fucked me up. Like what an idiot I am to think I could ever like, he would have beat my ass. I never would have admitted that then, but for sure he would have. And there was one night we were out there and somebody, I think they disrespected Jemmy or something like that. Right. And he, Knight was getting dragged out of there by somebody and, and they were pulling Knight back. And Knight grabbed his shirt, right? He grabbed his shirt right here. And, oh, because they, he already, they were already fighting. So the guy was kind of on the ground. Knight was on the ground. He was on the ground. Knight was getting dragged off. And as he was getting dragged off, he grabbed the guy's shirt and just explode. He punched him straight in the nose and just exploded his entire fucking nose, dude. He was a badass. Like, he was a hockey player. Hockey players are badasses. Knight was a badass. He always had my back. Anytime there was confrontation, like like when we were out that night on Mill or even on the show, I don't know what it showed. It might have showed it or not, but he's just a tough dude that just literally, <laughs> I remember him telling me, he's like, Ryan, you know that feeling like when you hit somebody just like just right and you feel it explode? And I was like, 
no, like, <laughs> I don't know that feeling, you know, but, but anyway, so pointless story, but it was just nice to reminisce about him. He was just a cool ass dude and just a total badass. Like I love him. I didn't know he fought on the challenge. I'd like to see that. Who do you, who do you get in a fight with? Um, he, he actually was at one of the reunions, I think. Um, do you, do you know who Frank from uh, real world San Diego is? Mm-mm, uh-uh. No, that was, after ours. I think it was after you guys. Okay, gotcha, no, uh So they got in a fight with him? It was more so just, like, a situation where, like, he said some stuff about, like, Jemmy, like, on the show, but then, like, obviously, like, the reunion's, like, months after, so, like, he, he, didn't, he didn't know he said it until, like, then, pretty much, and then, like, I think, like, Knight was a little intoxicated, yeah. um, and then, like, he just pretty much just went and, like, just hit him, like, on stage and had to get, like, taken off by security. Knight? Yeah. See, dude, he always, he commits, man. He doesn't give it, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not all talk. He literally, he'll fuck somebody up. Like, that's what, you got to admire that about him. Like, you know, I don't condone fighting and stuff like that. Like, especially now, but it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's something, it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, like, what a badass, you know? Like, <laughs> and I'm sure that dude wasn't small, right? My point is, you know, and he was younger, so whatever, but he's just like, somebody's disrespecting his, his girlfriend and he just, well, you know, he, that's how he was, man. That's how he was. I'm lucky he didn't beat my ass, to be honest. I'm I'm super lucky. So, because we had some good times, man. He he was a great dude. Uh, a great dude. I'd like to, I'd like to talk to other roommates uh, about him. You know, now that you say that homecoming thing, that'd be nice if it was if it had something to do with with night. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, you agreed to do this and took the time to do this. I had a ton of fun chatting with you, man, uh, reminiscing on some old times. And uh, you yeah. seem to be in a great place in your life right now. I'm happy to hear and see that. And um, for those watching, of course, I'm sure they're, uh, you know, going to like to see you in this uh, current light that you're in. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that you had as much fun as I did. I did, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, anytime. If you ever want to chat, you know, we just skimmed the, fir- the, the surface of it. So, uh Anytime you just hit me up. Congrats on your your podcast. I, I wish you much success, and uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll do the the homecoming show or something. We'll do another uh, podcast. Hey, well, time will tell. <laughs> All right, buddy. Nice All meeting right. you, man. You too. Take care. Right. Later, Michael.